Welcome to Soaps.com. I'm Kristen Burt. You loved her as Bianca on All My Children. So I am thrilled today to have Eden Regal join us. Eden, how are you? I'm great. How how are you doing? How's the pandemic treating you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my former guest room that is now a TV studio. <laughs> ah, well, it looks great. You, Thank I, you. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> I have to say, I I fell down the rabbit hole just kind of revisiting Bianca and her storyline. And, you know, in going back all over this, you know, the first on screen, same sex, uh, same gender kiss, transgender storyline, same sex wedding. I have to ask, and I have a feeling you probably have heard this before, but have Kelly and Mark called you for Pine Valley? Oh, you know what? Um, I, I, uh, no, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'll pick up the phone if they do. Uh, I, I know that that's like still in development, and it's like more of a reboot of the show, so it's gonna be. I think w- when it goes, uh, we'll we'll uh, focus more on the younger, sexier members of Pine Valley. But um, <laughs> I, I do know that if they ever want the keen women to you know make a cameo or a a couple of appearances me and susan and alicia would be so on board (laughs) i I guess that's what i sit there and think about i'm like we're here 21 years later and you guys were pioneers and all my children i'm like we need to kind of know what happened two decades later (laughs) sure i mean i would love to see i would love to see what has transpired don't you dare say two decades though that is just mean (laughs) oh my gosh they can't possibly that long i know you're right but it doesn't feel like that (laughs) have you been able to you know how sometimes like time adds a lot of perspective have you been able to really wrap your brain around what you guys accomplished with those storylines and really think about it now in terms of today and where we are and where the, the work that we still need to do Oh my gosh. I think about it all the time. I can't believe what we accomplished. I'm so proud of it. It, it may, I mean, listen, I'm, I, I, I still got a lot of life in me, but it's, it may be my proudest accomplishment because I just don't know how I can beat it. I mean, my kids are, but you know, mm-hmm. in, in, in terms of my, my creative outlet and, um, my career, but I, I am amazed with what we accomplished and for how groundbreaking it was for the time and, and how many minds we changed, how many letters I got from people who are personally impacted by the story that we told. Um, it's s- stunning. And that was Agnes, th- this, that was Agnes's um, reason for being was to tell stories that would um, worm their way <laughs> into people's <laughs> hearts and end up changing their minds and end up changing their lives. So she, um, she always, she, she always dedicated herself to telling, uh, stories that other people were too afraid to tell, um, that really pushed the envelope. Um, and, and this was one of them that that was very near and dear to her heart. I know because she told me that this was a story that she was, that she felt, um, was a calling of hers to tell. And I was just so glad to be one of the conduits, um, and to be able to tell such a beautiful, heartfelt human story, um, that made people root for the kind of love and, uh, uh, the kind of you know, person that they maybe hadn't encountered in their own lives, mm-hmm. um, if they had prejudice or, um, prejudice is just like prejudging, if they just hadn't encountered a gay person, then, um, then this was a way for them to get to know somebody and then get to love her. And they already loved and cared about Erica. So watching her go through the journey of accepting her daughter, I think helped a lot of people go through that journey themselves. Yeah, it was it was very realistic too because I think that there was such a shift and a change in in uh, Erica's mindset, and I, yes. that's very realistic. Sometimes people need to understand and grow and love. Yeah. And Thank you for saying that. I I totally agree. And Susan had the I've I've told her this before, but I just think she was so brave to tell the story because Erica Erica and she were like, you know, two sides of the same coin, but she could see that if Erica immediately accepted her daughter, that wasn't an interesting story. And also that wasn't gonna change anybody's mind. She had to allow herself 
the full journey starting from not accepting and understand she had such compassion for her character because the, it came from a place of I want what's best for my child I think a lot of people probably feel this way I want what's best for my child this life won't be the easiest one I want her to have the easiest one <laughs> so and then uh and then you know going through a very long sort of in real time, because it was soaps where you can tell the story every day in and day out, in real time, that long journey to know I love and accept you, not only in spite of this, but because of this, because this is who you are. That was, she was incredible. Bianca had a lot of loves in her life too. Um, obviously, Reese coming, you know, culminating in, in marriage, but was that the love of her life? Do you think oh, it could gosh. have been somebody else? You're going to so get popular. me in trouble with so many fandoms. I cannot even tell you. <laughs> I, I can have no, I can have, I can have no favorites. I don't know what the love of her life is. I do know that Reese had an affair with Bianca's brother-in-law, which doesn't speak that well of her. Um, I, I wish she had gotten to tell the full, I wish she had gotten to see the relationship with Frankie to fruition mm -hmm. if Frankie hadn't. <laughs> met her untimely demise right. um after their first kiss uh Oops. and then and then maggie you know i i i i i wonder what bianca and maggie got up to in in in, pa in paris together i'm sure it was wonderful and very fancy uh i know a lot of fans like to just kind of forget about the fact that in paris supposedly i think maggie also had um, it's soaps. So, you know, <laughs> the writers want to make things interesting. They don't want to show people just like happy and in love because how, how boring is That's that? Boring, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I feel like Bianca's love life can sort of go in many branches like fan fiction and you can just sort of like see each relationship through to the end and maybe live in that fantasy. And, and you know what, that kind of fantasy love is what Bianca really deserved. But that's not what the kind of love that people actually, you know, maybe get in their life unless they're really lucky. <laughs> they want the drama, <laughs> especially coming to their living rooms every single day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. When you were ready to put that chapter of All My Children behind you, and, and initially I think they said they weren't going to recast the role and then they did. Was, yes. How did you take that? Because I think... Well, maybe both ways of like, wait, how dare they? And then all of a sudden, well, no, they should continue the story. I, I feel yeah. like both could exist. Bianca is bigger than me. It always has been. I wasn't the first Bianca. I wasn't the last Bianca. It's how it should be. You know, um, uh, also I begrudged them nothing because I was, I think on Young and the Restless when they did that. So they had to, they wanted to tell more stories with her. And um, and I they did tell a gorgeous story after I left. She had another relationship um, that was very, very beautifully told. And both of the act actors involved in that were absolutely stunning in the role. And no, I, 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 I bear no ill will whatsoever. I'm just glad that I got a little piece of Bianca when I did. You did, you had such a beautiful piece of Bianca. So that, <laughs> that's you. what's wonderful. I know you just mentioned uh, Young and the Restless and you, you kind of transitioned from All My Children to Young and the Restless. Um, can you talk about your experience and, and how different it felt? Because you came off of such a magical special time and you mm -hmm. get thrown into a new situation. How did that whole play out? Yeah, it was such a strange, it was such a strange time in my life. It was, I think it was an odd moment for Young and the Restless too, although it was the only time that I ever experienced on the show. Um, they, uh, they had a, a, a legacy character that they wanted to take in an entirely new direction. Um, and they thought I'd be really good at it. But she also had like a lot of baggage because she was she was like a kind of a vixen and she was a cheater and all this stuff. <laughs> and they're not uh, they're not personality traits that I was extremely comfortable portraying. And I think that I think that people who watched the show could tell like it wasn't it didn't the role didn't fit me like a like a glove like Bianca did. Bianca, I just felt like I understood every thought that she had. I, I related to her in every way and this other role was a bit of a challenge and um, and I think it just didn't 
quite mesh, but I had a wonderful experience on the show. The cast was so kind. It was still fun to go to work every day and work with my one of my good best friends, Elizabeth Hendrickson, um, and uh, and and to work like next to the Grove. It was all just it was all so magical. And what I'm so grateful to uh, Young the Restless for was that it. Um, it was, it's the reason that I got to start my family. I took that role thinking, yeah, I, I, I don't want to go on a million auditions and wonder where my next paycheck is coming from. I want to be a, a part of a company and, mm -hmm. and, and, and also, you know, make a regular paycheck. And Stability and is to, good. Yes, yeah, stability <laughs> is good. And I want to have a baby. And so I feel like the Young and the Restless gave me the, 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 um, courage and stability uh to to have my first baby and i did while i was on that show so i just have such fond memories of like feeling first kicks and m morning sickness and all of that during my first experience being pregnant so it's, it's it was a really special time Everything and then and then when i left too. when i left that show uh, my consolation prize was like a beautiful little baby boy who has kept me very entertained since then. <laughs> that's, see, that's a beautiful story. And that's, you, you always understand the journey. Sometimes you don't understand it while you're in it and you get out of it and you're like, oh, the purpose is all right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Makes so much sense. Would you ever go back if like Days of Our Lives called or General Hospital, would you head back to a soap at this point in your career? I mean, you know, I've learned never, never say never. <laughs> <laughs> I love telling stories and um I don't know what's what's you know next for me. I've I I I am too I I've I've learned that you just can't possibly know um what's coming down the pike. So who knows? That is always the truth in the entertainment industry, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But you're doing a ton of work. I mean, I you are all yeah. over Disney Plus right now. <laughs> It's true. Like I've completely transitioned. I, I I still act a lot, but I mostly voice act. I do um, voices in cartoons and in a lot of video games, and I voice direct for a bunch of um, really awesome cartoons. A lot of them for Disney and Disney Plus. Um, Wait, explain what voice directing is in case someone yeah, has no idea. <laughs> there's no reason anybody should know what it is. I didn't even really know what it what it was until I until I got into it. Um, but in uh, in animation, there are uh, many different parts, and there are people who uh, are very skilled and gifted in doing the visual side of things, and then there's also the voice record. So there's two halves to the performance. There's how the character looks, which is the job of the um, character designers and storyboard artists and animators and and colorists. Like, there's so many people, and there are directors who... Um, who pay attention to all of the visual stuff. And then we have our voice records with our voice actors. And I am the one who helps give context to the actors, helps them understand, because you're just looking at a piece of paper, like how, how far you are from the other people, what's going on in the scene, what might you not know. I, I read the scenes with them so that they have another actor to play off of because it's very unpleasant to act in a vacuum. <laughs> and <laughs> when you do live action, you get so much from your scene partner. So I, I act with them so that they have somebody to play off of. And um, we work together to figure out the scene and to figure out what's the most dynamic version of the scene and to, and the character work. And I have basically prepped the episode and, and understand, uh, uh, try to understand what every character wants in every scene and what they're up against and to help the, to help the actor understand the tone of the show and some things that they might not, you know, if they're not doing it every day like I am, if they, 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 they need to understand like how comedically broad it is and, and what's the size of the performances. And so I'm help, I'm there to help guide them. That's my job. Are you guys back in studio doing this in the sound booth or is everyone recording from home still? We are still recording from home. Uh, it's really unbelievable what, um, what people in this industry were able to do when the shutdown happened because I 
obviously thought that I was going to be completely out of a job. But everybody, I, I have my home studio right here. So that's where I do all my voice work. And most voice actors, some are going back into studio, but most voice actors also have their own home studios. The engineers connect us all together. We're on Zoom and uh, it helps make sure that everybody's safe. I hope one day we'll get to get back in studio. There is something that so, so special about being in the same room with somebody. Um, and also I just miss these people so much, but yeah, we're, we're recording everything on zoom. Often the actors at home, the engineers at home or at the studio, I'm at home. Some of the other creatives are at home and we're all connected and it just feels, it still feels like we're together. It's really oh, cool. fantastic. Cause you know, there is something about still having sweatpants and, and slippers on when you're working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I, I, that's one positive that I'm not going to miss having to put on a pair of skinny jeans. Um, uh, I, I like my sweatpants. I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> <Same here>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we all stood up, we'd be like, we yeah. look really cute from the top up. <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's all that matters, right? I know that you were also a child actor and I, you know, always curious, Broadway never leaves you. Um, <sighs> Yeah. Any any hopes, dreams to, to go back to New York and, and possibly do a show oh at some point? Gosh. Yes. So many hopes, so many dreams. Um, I, I, I would love that so much. What's your uh, dream show definitely... that you have yet to do? Oof. Well, I mean, when I, I was a kid in Les Miserables, and of course I dreamed of coming back and playing Eponine one day. And I think I've sort of missed that boat. So now my new dream is to come back and play Fantine. <laughs> And then into the, the next role. thing, I'll just go into <laughs> Madame Tenardier and I'll just like age up through all the roles. Master the house. <laughs> yeah. Are, have your kids been bitten by the acting bug? Um, no, they have not. Uh, I, I, uh, I hope they don't, but it's up to them if they want to. They, um, they both have just like, you know, regular childhoods, which I didn't really have. I was a kid actor and I got so much f from it. Um, but I, I just sort of wanted to see what it would be like for them to not, you know, go on auditions and stuff like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of rejection. And, um, you know, I, I, my hat's off to my mom who, was able to support me through all of that. I, I, I can't imagine how heartbreaking it must have been like when I wanted a role and didn't get it or, you know, didn't feel good enough for it or whatever. But even though it's never about you, it's always just about the right it's fit for the project. Different now too. Do you know, I think about that with social media when I see some of yeah. my friends, kids working, they all have social media presence too. So it's yeah. different no, from it's when you were coming up. Absolutely. It's a, it's a whole new world. I mean, like now you can be, I was doing theater. It, it was Broadway. It was like on a big scale, but it wasn't like people knew who I was. My picture wasn't all over the internet. I still could be sort of normal. You're right. It is different. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, a pool that if you wade into it, there's, it's going to ripple. So, um, <laughs> I, I work with a lot of kids and these kids are in, incredible such professionals you know and definitely like there are many positives of being involved in this industry but um uh there are also pitfalls so it's something that you don't I didn't take lightly and and we ultimately decided that our kids maybe later but right now when they're little they're if they come to you at 18 it. and say I'm gonna go and pursue an acting career are you going to say whatever, whatever makes it. you happy, sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody should get the chance to pursue their dreams, even if it's difficult. I, I know that there's like there are famous stories about people who like took the safe way and it didn't necessarily work out for them. So uh, life is short and we should all get a chance to to give it a try. I mean, the worst thing would be to say, I shoulda, you know, I, I, right. I should put myself out there. Yeah, whatever. Whatever the yeah. what if. Uh, what's your next dream? <laughs> I would like to get out of the global pandemic and return to normal life. My next dream is uh, uh, if, if it was announced tomorrow that I could like go get my kids vaccinated, I would be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
achievement unlocked. <laughs> You're um, like, yes, that's, that's 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 like my next thing. Um, uh, and then I'm 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 very hopeful that we can get on a plane and all go on a family vacation together. And we we would love to go to Europe. Or um, uh, we had a a trip planned and hadn't quite pulled the trigger on getting tickets we really wanted to go to Italy and uh and to France and so I'm hoping that my next dream is that we get to do that the kids love to travel um and and then after that I don't I don't know I'm very fulfilled by my my animation and voice Mm -hmm. work right now and I'm going to get you to Pine Valley. I just want you on Pine Valley. I want want (laughs) Susan there. I want Alicia there. (laughs) You always have to like come in and like just cause some chaos, have some fun. I will let you do that, that you can be my (laughs) champion. I I would love that. I'm going to throw it out to the universe. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it it was an absolute pleasure having you today. It was so much fun catching up and kind of like, you know, going down memory lane with uh, your career and all my children. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. so much. Same here. That was that, that was that was really fun. It's it, those those were um, some of my warmest memories. So I I just love revisiting it. Um, uh, all my children is very special to me. Understood. It was a special series, I think, for so many people. Thanks again, Eden. Thank you. Thank you.